Your wedding video may very well be one of the most important purchases you make for your wedding day because quite frankly, it's one of the only things you're gonna have when it's all said and done. This is something you're gonna be watching for decades and pass down to your kids and grandkids. So this is something you shouldn't take lightly. And there's a lot of questions that you're gonna to wanna to ask your videographer to make sure that they're the perfect fit for you. So after filming weddings for over eight years personally, these are some questions that I get, but also some of the questions I don't get that I wish I got more of because these are very important things you need to know before you make a decision on who's gonna film your wedding. So with that said, let's get into the first question. First question is, are you available for our wedding date? Videographers tend to book anywhere between one to two years out alongside the photographer. They're usually one of the first vendors that are actually booked. So I recommend that you actually have a date and venue nailed down before you reach out to a videographer. Now, if you don't have a wedding date or venue picked out yet, I just made a full guide on how to pick the perfect wedding venue for you, as well as a bunch of recommendations, you know, depending on where you live. The link will be in the description below, but let's move on to our next question. Question two is how long have you been filming weddings or how many weddings have you filmed? This will really just help you determine how much experience they have because in the end of the day, there's really no way to beat experience and learning how to roll with the punches that wedding days naturally throw at you. That doesn't mean new videographers can't do it, but again, there's any problems they've never experienced and do you really want your wedding to be the first time they experience a problem? Everyone has to get their experience somewhere, but hiring someone with a long track record of couples who they've taken care of is just that peace of mind, knowing that you're gonna get exactly what you want. You don't really have to worry or stress about what's going to happen to your memories and how things are actually going to be captured and if you're going to get everything that you actually want. A good rule of thumb is just to see if they've filmed weddings for at least a few years and or shot 10 to 20 plus weddings. That's a pretty good indicator that they're going to take care of you on your wedding day. All right, question three is, do you shoot alone or do you have a second shooter? Now, just like photographers, videographers will oftentimes have second shooters, which just helps us be able to split up if need be. We can be in two places at once, but also make sure we have multiple angles to not miss anything. I'll just give you an example. Like when you're walking down the aisle and you want to see your fiance's reaction, these are you know two different angles that you'll need to actually see this. There's lots of examples like this throughout the day. This just makes sure that we don't miss anything. It's really a, a good peace of mind and backup for you. Question four is, can we see an example of a full length wedding film? This is really important because just seeing short little snippets or trailers on Instagram may give you kind of a feel for what their style is, but it's not gonna show you what a full film looks like and what your film could actually look like potentially. This will make sure that all the moments that you care about are displayed throughout their films or if there's certain stylistic things that you like like you want to hear the vows in the video you can actually see if they use things like this by watching a full film so this is really important don't just watch a trailer make sure you see a full film as well question five is how will we receive the wedding film so what i see a lot of films being delivered on is either a flash drive a disc maybe a google drive and these things are fine but the only issue that you'll kind of run into is they won't really get shared, they won't get seen by your family, your friends, and all the people who are at the wedding who you want to see it, or maybe the people who weren't at the wedding who you also wanna share it with. They won't really get seen. So there's lots of different ways that it can be delivered. We personally do something a little bit differently. We actually deliver a personal Netflix gallery. It's hosted with lifetime access on a domain that you can easily share with all the people you care about, individual shareable links. That's just an example, but make sure that however it's delivered is something accessible and something that you won't lose over time because then it kind of defeats the purpose of getting a wedding video, right? Question six is what is your turnaround time? Essentially just seeing how long are you gonna be waiting after the wedding until you get your full films. You, know, you might've heard horror stories of people waiting like six months to a year and beyond for their wedding film. Make sure this is something that's stated inside the contract, something that you have an expectation set for. I can tell you from experience that a pretty standard turnaround time for wedding videography is 10 to 12 weeks. And that can vary drastically depending on the time of the year and who you're working with here. Now, speaking of contracts, question seven is, do you require a contract? I'm gonna say right off the bat, if they don't require a contract, you should run the other way. That is a huge red flag. It's holding nobody accountable. And if anything were to happen, that's how you get scammed. I've heard a lot of bad stories when it comes to photographers and videographers and different scenarios there. Make sure you have things in writing. Make sure you have a solid contract and you understand what you're getting yourself into. Question number eight is what happens if you get sick on our wedding day or you know some kind of emergency essentially? This is extremely important because you want to have a backup plan. You want to have a plan B in case something were to happen. That way you don't end up scrambling and you're texting your Uncle Phil or, or someone you know to, to come and show up with a camcorder to make sure you get something for your day. Ask what that's going to look like. Make sure that it's in the contract. This is why we have a team of videographers. So that way we have backups for our backups. So no matter what happens, someone is going to be there with experience, with expertise. Believe it or not, we've had some pretty crazy emergency situations pop up, but we've always been able to cover our bases because we have our team and everyone ready to go. 
Question number nine is, will we have a meeting before the wedding day? What I see a lot of videographers do is just send off a package PDF. They show up on your day. And the issue is, is that they're running around having no idea what they're doing. They don't have any idea of what you're looking for, the moments you care about, the people that are important to you. And quite frankly, you don't have any connection with them. You haven't really talked with them. So it makes the day kind of awkward. Now, that's why we do one-on-one -on -one consultations before we actually book with any couple to make sure we can give them exactly what they want. We know what their desires are. And more importantly, we have a personal connection because you know, you're going to spend more time with your videographers and photographers than you will with your partner on the wedding day, more than likely. So that's extremely important. We also do a wedding prep meeting about one or two months before the wedding to make sure we nail down all the details and just to make sure everyone's on the same page so we have no miscommunications on the day of. And you guys just get to relax and enjoy your day. And question number 10 is what are your package options? The reason we left this one for last is if all these other things don't line up for you, it's not even worth getting into the pricing. Being honest, hiring a videographer just based on the price is a surefire way to have some regrets with your wedding videography. Wedding planning surveys show that over 25% of couples who hire professional videographers regret that they didn't spend more. And that's A, couples that reported it, and B, couples that have had the foresight to even be aware of that because, well, they don't have another wedding video that they got to compare it to and what experience they could have had. I've heard from so many different brides that they regret spending so much money on their photography and not allocating more of their budget towards videography. Because quite frankly, just imagine, what would you prefer to do? Would you rather sit down and look through a thousand photos or would you rather sit down and watch a 10 minute video that encapsulates the entire day? And I've heard from so many of our couples personally that they watch their videos so much more than they ever look at their photos. And I'm not trying to like sway you and push you to like work with us or anything. I'm just telling you what I've been told by all of our couples that getting video is quite frankly one of the best investments that they made for their wedding day. And I'm sure you can kind of see why. So when you're picking out a wedding videography package, make sure that it encapsulates everything you want and really think long-term because this will be one of the most long-term investments you make for your wedding day. And a quick bonus question is when you're talking about packages and pricing, make sure you ask about travel fees. Oftentimes, if a videographer is traveling from far away, there may be fees that they don't mention right off the bat. Make sure there's no extra hidden costs that you're unaware of. Now, we personally captured weddings in over 22 states and we actually don't charge any travel fees at all. So that's my list of 10 questions here. If you go through all those questions and you connect with the videographer you're talking to, you probably found the right one. Now, like I said earlier on, make sure that you have a conversation over the phone or over video calls. So you actually get a chance to kind of like feel them out rather than just sending emails and texts. It's really hard to kind of understand what someone is about just over text or email. Now, if you're interested in talking with me about your wedding day, go down in the description. I'll have a link for our contact page. Fill out your info there. And if we're available for your date, we'll set up a call and really just see if we'll be a good fit for you. There's no pressure to book or anything. We really just want to see if everything makes sense. If not, no worries. We're just going to refer you to someone who can really help you guys out. Either way, I'm excited to hear from you. I hope this is valuable for you.